Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm Carlos Curbelo and I'm a member of K-12 Climate Action, a wonderful initiative of the Aspen Institute. Uh, together with my fellow commissioners, we're working on identifying common sense solutions to help our schools, thousands and thousands of schools throughout the country, mitigate for climate change, meaning reduce their carbon footprint, adapt for climate change, and that's especially important in, uh, in uh, our part of the world in South Florida, and then also help teach children about climate change and help prepare uh, today's generations, rising generations, for the jobs of tomorrow. Uh, so today, we're very fortunate to be joined by Mayor Francis Suarez. He is the mayor of the city of Miami, someone I know well, and someone who, for a number of years now, has been a great leader when it comes to shining a light on the challenge of climate change, what it means for local communities like his, uh, the city of Miami, and what we can all do uh, to address uh, one of the greatest challenges that humanity has ever faced. So, Mayor, thanks so much for joining us today. Congressman, it's an honor to be here with you, um, and it's always a pleasure to spend time with you and to participate in forums like this with you. So, you have pledged uh, that the city uh, will uh, be carbon neutral. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's a 2050 or a 2040 pledge. Uh, in South Florida, uh, we just got a new pledge uh, about a week ago, and that was from Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Our local school district uh, has uh, set the goal. It'll be difficult, but they have set the goal uh, to be carbon neutral by 2030. Uh, given your leadership in this space, uh, when, when you saw that news, I mean, what? tell us about that. How important is that? as the city of Miami and other uh, cities in the state of Florida throughout the country and the world set these ambitious climate goals? Well, like you said in the intro, uh, uh, Congressman, this is a generational uh, goal. Uh, this is an existential threat. And frankly, one of the things that I like about the way it's being discussed now is it's given, being given the appropriate threat level, which it's, it's being described as a national security issue. And frankly, through my work, as chair of the Environment Commission, uh, Committee for the, uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors and as the vice chair of the Global Council on Adaptation, for which I'm the only U.S. mayor on the, on the council, um, I think it's imperative that we look at the severe ramifications of not dealing with our climate issues immediately. Um, as you've said, uh, I was blessed uh, through the intervention of, of the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, to have been invited into C40. Um, we're one of the few cities that have uh, become part of C40, and we did take a carbon um, neutrality pledge, and it's very exciting for me on Earth Day to be able to issue our carbon neutrality plan, and it's a, it's a 2050 plan um, because uh, we, were, we were given a little bit of extra time, even though we're in C40, uh, because we had, we had joined a little later, but we do pledge to, to reduce our carbon footprint by 60% um, by the year 2036, so understanding that a city is, is, is a slightly larger endeavor than, than just the government, right? We're not just talking about the city's government. We're talking about the city as a whole, which includes uh, many of the buildings from the school board. I think it's wonderful what the school board has done. Um, I think uh, not only do we have to look at uh, mitigation, which is obviously part of our carbon neutrality plan, not only do we have to look at adaptation, which is part of our Miami Forever bond plan, which is a $200 million resiliency plan to make Miami the most water resilient city on the planet, but frankly, I think we have to use this opportunity and technology to start looking at reversals, to start looking at how do we reverse the damage that's already been done. I mean, some of the estimates that we've seen from my work uh, on the uh, Climate Adaptation uh, Board and Commission really paint a bleak picture, even if we're able to mitigate at levels that we think uh, are possible. So for us, um, I think we have to do more as, as a generation. The beauty of it is the next generation, the Generation Zers, uh, are really pushing us uh, to do more because they realize that they're going to inherit whatever planet it is uh, that we leave them with. So, Mayor, as we think about this transition from uh, traditional energy sources to clean energy, obviously the transportation sector uh, is a major topic and a major challenge. Uh, school districts, of course, uh, operate a lot of buses. Uh, most of these buses are diesel. And now a lot of school districts uh, have started uh, initiatives to uh, move uh, to electric buses. Now, uh, 
it's it's wonderful to have an electric bus fleet, but uh, you really need the infrastructure for that. Do you think there are ways that maybe cities like Miami can partner with school districts to make sure that that infrastructure, uh, that the school districts and really uh, anyone else who wants to electrify their fleets would have to rely on that that's available to them? Because uh, that's, a, that's a major concern as uh, school districts and others are looking to transition. Absolutely. In fact, I feel like we have a responsibility to do that. Uh, I actually have been in talks with a company called Electrion. And what the company does is it electrifies the roadways so that uh, you can have electric buses that are running on electrified roadways, um, obviously with uh, no risk uh, to pedestrians, um, and they're actually charging as they drive. So they don't even have to be stationed. They can have one-tenth the size of a battery because they don't have to uh, have long trips. It's not like a 300-mile charge and then at the end of the day recharge. Uh, so they can charge as they go. Um, and, and I think that there's going to be a lot of technologies like that. We're also obviously talking to our companies like the Boring Company, um, which uh, provides underground transportation using Teslas. And that's something that can uh, be a transportation system for children going to school as a mass transit system. And just to give you context on, on that technology, uh, you know, the Boring Company is building underground tunnels for $10 million a mile. Uh, our county has proposed an extension of our Metro Mover, right, uh, uh, along 2nd Avenue at a cost of $240 million a mile. So, uh, there's an order of magnitude differential that's enormous, and we can use all those additional funds to build more and more transit so that we have a cleaner and more efficient way of getting around our city. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and uh, just to wrap things up here in our brief conversation, I want to ask you, how important are these partnerships? How important is communication between local governments, county government, state governments, uh, to get the job done, to get from where we are today to where we all know we need to get as difficult and as challenging as that uh, will be. Uh, you're someone who uh, is, uh, is uh, considered an a important leader here by, by many of our local mayors, uh, commissioners, uh, elected officials uh, throughout uh, South Florida and the state. Uh, how important is it for other mayors in their states, in their communities, to reach out, to build these partnerships, and to, to really assume uh, uh, that leadership role that is so critical if we're going to get across the finish line in time. You know, Congressman, I, I just don't think it's possible to do it any other way. When you think about um, the jurisdictional challenges, right, there are some things, we, you just talked about a bi-jurisdictional issue, which is uh, creating an infrastructure to electrify electric buses that are operated by a different jurisdictional partner. Um, you need communication to, to be able to surmount those jurisdictional issues. When you look at funding, I mean, you, you got to talk about, you know, the, the federal government, which is the largest economy in the world, right, the largest company in the world, a multi-trillion dollar budget, our state budget, a $90 billion budget, our local uh, school board, as you know, because you served on that board, on, you know, a, a multi-billion dollar budget, our county, a $9 billion budget, our city, a billion one. So when you, when you bring these macro economies together, you can provide scale and funding so that not any one industry or not any one uh, organization has to bear the total brunt of a massive capital cost. So I think communication, interaction, best practices, uh, those are things that should be shared. And the only way to do that is through communication and collaboration. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having this conversation with K-12 Climate Action and uh, the Aspen Institute. And we're so grateful to our audience, everyone who has taken the time to listen. It's been a privilege uh, to share these thoughts with you and the Aspen Institute.